Today I'm here in Hongdae, Seoul. Hongdae is like one of the most popular tourist spots in Korea, if not the most popular tourist spot. Well, I've been told that a lot of people like to go there for a good mix of street food and restaurant dining experience. So today I wanted to try a bunch of those places to show you guys. By the way, this might look a little familiar to you guys. It's like a place where a lot of street interviewers like to do their interviews. Would you date a foreigner? What brings you to Korea? That type of content that are really popular these days. Well, today I feel strong and independent. I don't think I'm gonna talk to strangers. In Hongdae, there's this one long stretch of street that kind of works as the main street where you can find different kinds of entertainment. I'm talking about things like arcade, street performers, see-through karaoke, and of course, food and shopping. However, you'll find most of the popular food vendors in smaller streets that are just on the other side of the same block from the main street. And I think I want to start my day with this takochi or chicken skewer. Chicken skewers are one of the most popular street foods in Korea and one of the very few that is actually mostly meat. When I was young, there were rumors about these chicken skewer vendors sourcing their meat from pigeons because these were so affordable for meat in Korea where meat is quite expensive. I'm pretty sure it was a fake story though. So I got this cheese chicken skewer, which comes with melted mozzarella on top. Let's put this good protein in my mouth. Cheesy as fuck, boy. Well, it's been a little while since I had this chicken skewer. There's chicken, I believe that's like thigh meat, and uh, mozzarella cheese, and some green onions in between. Okay, let's get a taste of that street protein. Believe it or not, it's not as spicy as it seems, and most people won't have a hard time eating it. What I like is they have big fat thigh meat. Sometimes you get one of these chicken skewers and their meat's like so skinny. Oh no, did I get it on my chin? <laughs> Not my chin, that's my beauty point. It was a very satisfying little bite. And while the inflation nearly doubled the price of these chicken skewers in many places, I still feel like it's worth getting. When you're eating street food, it's hard to get protein like that, you know? The street could use some more protein. And I'm one of them. Okay, this street protein needs some more food. So what's next? Man, there's something really special about street food. So I decided to get this thing called tornado potato. It's a whole potato that's cut into a shape that's kind of like an auger drill. It's not traditional per se, but it's gotten really popular in the recent years. That's my tornado potato. Oh, she's not put the seasoning. How about that? I don't know when this became a thing, but it's become really popular in Korea. You know, I thought it was going to be a tourist BS. It's a, a lot better than I thought. It's like French fries, extra crispy, and it's in this spiral form. And this white powder that's on top, it's completely legal. It's an onion-flavored powder. The onion seasoning didn't really taste like onion, but it was more like onion-flavored Korean snacks. Very sweet and savory. Yeah, I would say it's pretty good. Way better than I expected. It was my first time trying one of these, and I have to say, it definitely felt like it's worth a try. This time, let's try going back to the Korean street food basics and have some good dakbokki. Of course, you can get it from one of the vendors that are on the streets, but you can also get very good dakbokki from a place like this that's more of a restaurant environment. Oh, perfect balance. I don't know what you guys think. I think it looks pretty amazing. I got a lot of food here, so let's go through them one by one. This is tteokbokki, spicy rice cake, and that's mixed tempura or mixed chigim, which means fried food. That's sunde. Show me, show me. That's kimbap. Can I pick one up? Mm. And lastly, we have the fish cakes. Let's get that tteokbokki, spicy rice cake. Okay, this isn't backed by statistics, 
But a lot of Korean women, more so than men, like eating spicy tteokbokki. I don't know why. Maybe they just like it spicy. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I said that as my friend was enjoying the tteokbokki. <laughs> Tteokbokki is usually very sweet, and depending on where you go, it can be very spicy at the same time. So be careful if you don't like spicy food. Now, I've shown this a numerous times on my channel. You'll realize that every time you go out for tteokbokki, they also sell this tikim or fried food. Of course, you can just eat it. What most people do is they dip it in this tteokbokki sauce, almost submerge it, and then they eat it. Apparently, this thing called kimpa, they started selling these at Trader Joe's and it became like insanely popular. Really, the, the times have changed. Korean kids used to get bullied in school for bringing kimpa to school. <laughs> Look at that Asian boy. <laughs> Koreans also do this. I personally don't do this, but they eat kimpa with the tteokbokki sauce as well. If you look at the kimbap carefully, there's ham, eggs, pickled radish, and imitation crab inside the white rice and dried seaweed wrap. But there's no rule on what's supposed to go in it. So depending on where you get it from, they can taste very different. And let's talk about this sundae. So it's pork blood sausage. I believe the filling is glass noodles and pork blood. Some people just don't like it. I was one of them. I, I guess I just kind of got used to it. How you eat this is they're gonna give you this salt. You dip it in that salt. Believe it or not, sundae doesn't have that strong of a flavor. So even if it's your first time, you'll most likely be fine. Let's try some fish cake, shall we? I like how they give you the fish cake in the broth. Keeps it warm, prevents it from getting too dry. Nobody likes it too dry, you know? Why are you looking at me like that? The soy sauce, this is their dipping sauce. Since practically every restaurant uses factory-made fish cakes, they all tend to taste the same, and they're consistently decent. Tastes just like it did when I was a little boy. I also really like this one. This one's called kimari, which means seaweed wrap. It's got like glass noodles inside. You can see this very often in Korea. And you dip that in the soy sauce, So I'm not like a huge fan of tteokbokki. So when I do eat tteokbokki, I make sure it's pretty good. So if you're visiting, this would be one of the places that I would recommend. It's one of those days when I feel like I need to have some Korean barbecue. I feel like that every day. Here I am in front of this random Korean barbecue restaurant. I've never been here. I've seen this place a bunch of times. Let's go have some. Do you say you want soju? What kind? So the place that we went to was one of the most affordable barbecue places around here. And when you go to a restaurant that is affordable in Korea, you'll realize that they tend to have fewer side dishes. But I'm totally cool with that if I can save some serious amount of dollars. Don't worry, they always have kimchi. I'm guessing many of you guys already know what this is. This is Korean liquor called soju. Traditionally, they're made from rice. But the ones you can find in restaurants and supermarkets aren't actually made from rice. Often in Korean barbecue restaurants, you get this doenjang jjigae or soy bean stew for free as well. Oh, thank you. Because a lot of people in Korea don't want their clothes to get dirty, many restaurants will give you an apron if you ask them. Personally, I just wear it as a fashion statement. Sometimes at home, I just wear an apron, completely naked, because it kind of makes me feel mommy, you know? So we got a bottle of soju, I don't condone drinking, but it is something that a lot of people drink with Korean barbecue. Let me pop this open. By the way, let me save you guys from looking like a fool. Don't do one of those bottle shaking techniques that you saw in K-drama. Only Korea booze and 20 olds do that. All right, now let me pour for you. Be polite. Outside of professional environment, Koreans aren't that strict about the drinking etiquettes that you might have seen on social media. Use two hands if they're older than you, and that's really all you need to do. And here's our affordable marinated pork ribs, or dejigalbi in Korean. So marinated meat is surprisingly not very popular in Korea. And this marinated pork rib is like 
one of the few things that are marinated and popular in Korea. I feel like Hongdae is one of the very few places where they have a lot of tourists, but the prices of the food are still somewhat fair. Like in Myeongdong, everything is so insanely overpriced that it doesn't even make sense. Part of it is because Hongdae is a tourist spot, but it's also a college town. Hongdae literally stands for Hongikdaekyo, which is a very well-known university in Seoul. So when you're in a college town in Korea, things tend to be a little more affordable than other parts of the city. I'm so sorry. I'm supposed to be doing the cooking. I'm enforcing the gender stereotype here. Okay, let's try some of that meat now, shall we? So things have gotten pretty expensive in Korea, so it's very hard to find Korean barbecue that is less than $10 a serving. So I would say in today's standards, this is a very affordable restaurant. Yeah, I like it. You know what I want to do? I want to take this piece of meat, get some of that green onions, This is just the way that a lot of people eat their meat, and it's one of my favorite ways to eat Korean barbecue. Mm. I don't have a crazy rich Asian background, so I spent a fair amount of time in my life eating cheap Korean barbecue and drinking with friends. Don't drink too much soju by the way. I've made many mistakes, especially around women because of that. Oh, thank you. Well, that was a pretty good time. So Korean barbecue, I thought that was decent. Uh, definitely not the most delicious Korean barbecue that I've had, but then it's very affordable. Yeah, I think you get more than what you pay for. Oh, I like how there's a little sitting area here. It didn't exist like 20 years ago. Okay, my friend sit here next to me. I need to tell a story. Okay. You can sit over here. So I don't want to sound too much like a boomer, but Hongdae used to be a place where there's a lot of like subculture, people that are into like heavy metal, people that do indie music. There's still some of that, but I would say most of it disappeared. It just became more of a tourist appeal. Back in the days, there was this thing called uh, Norito, which means playground. Hongdae Norito, do you know what it is? Mm -hmm. Oh, you're old enough to know that? No way. I'm not old enough to know, but I know. You heard what it was, right? It was literally a playground built for little children, but it became this thing where a lot of teenagers that ran from home used to like gather up and hang out and smoke cigarettes. I had my teenage years too. One day, I was one of those teenagers for one day. Because I was like, man, my house is lame. My parents are lame. I need to get the hell out. So I came out to Hongdae and I went to that playground to meet my like-minded people, find my community. And I saw those kids and I was like, Man, these kids are like so lame and so awkward. I'd rather go home to my abusive household. This is <laughs> not to roast those kids, but it was pretty lame. <laughs> so yeah, I went back home to my abusive household. I mean, this story must be pretty boring to you guys. Let's just move on to the desserts. It's a little over the top, but I like it. They have waffle and crepe? That sounds good to me. All right. Looks like they uh, sprayed the Nutella all over quite violently. Looks like somebody took a powerful diarrhea on top of the waffle. Oh, that looks good. Oh, okay. Oh, oh. Yeah. What's that gummy thing? I think it's part my crate. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Let me enjoy the heck out of this blueberry Nutella crepe. These waffles are pretty simple. It has a bunch of whipping cream and other sweet toppings. But because of that, it's one of those things that are hard to taste bad. I'm not sure how waffles became a thing in Korea, but it's been a pretty popular street food since I was a little kid. I must be like a trendsetter or something. When I ordered my crepe, there was no one here. Now there's a bunch of people lined up. I'm not trying to complain. This blueberry that's in this, it's uh, frozen. In fact, it's still frozen. <laughs> Okay, pretty good. Okay, why don't I try one last thing before I call it a day? Like, something trendy. Well, this thing called Tang Hulu is trending on Korean social media right now. And the inner Korean teenage mean girl in me demands this. That side of my ego has a name, by the way. Her name's Jenny, and she's very bitchy. There's one thing that's gotten insanely popular recently in Korea. 
this thing right here. Pretty much sugar-coated fruits. And let me tell you something about Korea. Just because it's trending doesn't mean it's good. In fact, most of the time it's not good. And I have to say, out of all the tanghulu that I've had in the past, this is like the most heavily sugar-coated one. And the fruit tasted really good, surprisingly. Wow. Hello. Were those just random people? How do I look? Like a Korean movie star? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Thank you. This is something that I thought was very clever though. The reason that they give you this little cup, well, one, to prevent the sugar from like dripping into your hand, but you can also use this to push the fruits up that's so smart. Very simple solution for something that can be very annoying. By the way, Tangholu originated from China, so it's not Korean food. Just saying the word China reminds me of my ex. She was, she was quite toxic, but it's cool. It's all in the past. I hope she's doing well. I'm sure by now she's happy. Probably not as happy as she would have liked to be with me. <laughs> When something is very popular in Korea, I get a little skeptical. I'm not sure if it's just this one place that's good. But I think they're really great. I especially like the strawberry. It was sweet to the core. Strawberry and I have that in common. Now, the most important part. Don't they call this shine musket? Is it shine musket? I'm not really sure. Uh, it looks like shine musket. Is it musket or muscat? Muscat? Okay, shine musket. Overall, I thought the tanghulu was great. High quality fruits are very expensive in Korea, but the fruits that they had was very good. Definitely sweeter than my Chinese eggs. Wow, that was really good. Although, I might have preferred it without the sugar on. <laughs> I just had to be a typical Korean guy and get this coffee. And my friend, being the ABG that she is, <laughs> Decided to get this uh, jasmine, jasmine bubble tea. Can you show me? If I think about it, she never asked for a free rave ticket. So maybe she's not an ABG. All right, overall, I felt like, you wanna be in the shot too? You can be in the shot. You can just, you can just stand here awkwardly. Okay. So overall, I feel like Hongdae, I'll be honest with you guys, I wouldn't come here purely for the dining experience. It's kind of a fun place to walk around, to shop and they're not gonna overcharge you. So you feel okay about that too. Thank you guys so much for watching and uh, till we meet again, watch my other videos too. Help me make that money. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>